All right. Okay, what's up, guys? So, um, using the law of conservation of energy, what we have here is um, pretty much the fact that for a isolated system or a closed system where no work is being added or um, there's no negative work being done to take energy away from the system or work added to add energy to the system, the kinetic energy and potential energy beforehand are going to equal the kinetic and potential energy all right, at the end or, or at the final position. So for this, you have a pig standing on top of a muddy hill on a rainy day, the hill, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's just, I like to just draw a free body diagram if I can to give myself a little help. Um, this is the hill. All right, uh, I don't know what a pig looks like. Little squiggle tail, little head, little snout. I don't know, bacon. Either way. All right, so we're telling us that this guy, the pig, is at a height of 30 or what? 30 meters. So that is his initial height. All right. What else do they tell us? They say that the hill is 100 whatever uh, meters long. And that the pig is got a mass of 500 kilograms. Okay, they want to know what the pig's speed is at the bottom of the hill. So that would be on the final side because they want to know it like at the end or at the bottom. So because of that, we're going to want to looking for uh, VF here. So let me scoot this over. So the mechanical energy initially has to equal the mechanical energy final. So if you wrote it out, KEI plus PEI is going to equal All right, so again, if we wrote all that out. Okay, so since all the masses are the same, like we're, the, we're dealing with the pig in this whole case, like we can pretty much just cancel out the mass in this, in these uh, problems, or in this equation here. So uh, if the pig is standing still, that means initially, right, it would be one half of zero meters per second squared, uh, which is zero, plus gravity, we're gonna just use 9.8 times, what, 30 meters? And that's going to equal one half VF squared plus nine point eight times. Now, since he's at the uh, the bottom of the hill, bottom of the hill, that's going to basically be height is equal to zero. So cancels out zero. This is zero. So nine point eight times thirty is going to equal one half VF squared. So you're going to have uh, 294 is equal to one half VF squared. Um, yeah, so, all right, you multiply this by two to get rid of it. So multiply both sides by two, you're going to get uh, 588 is equal to VF squared. And then you're going to just square root both sides. And you're going to get a final velocity of about 
two, four, eight meters per second. All right, that would be your your first first guy. All right, now let's go to number five. So number five is, already has the drawing here for us. Um, just the only thing that it doesn't tell us is that at point A it has a speed of this. So you can add that because since we're dealing with that at the top, I would say that the initial velocity here is going to be 8 meters per second. All right. A is 50 meters, B is 30 meters. So San Francisco, okay, strikes his, all right, we have the mass of the cart, rolls down the hill uh, at point A, it's this eight meters per second. How fast is it be going at point B? So, <clears throat> if we're just kind of, Oops, sorry, throw this in. All right, again, mechanical energy initial has to equal the mechanical energy final. So I'm not going to rewrite <clears throat> yeah, all of this again. I'm not just going to rewrite this again. I'm just going to go straight into, into our uh, actual variables here. So one half MVI squared plus MGHI. All right. So again, since we're dealing, we're worrying about the same cart, the, the masses can cancel out of this, which is great. Limits a lot of information. So the initial velocity of the cart was eight. So we're going to have one half eight squared plus now at height or at point A, the height was 50 meters. So gravity times uh, the 50 meters, and that's going to equal one half VF squared plus GHF. So 9.8 times uh, 30. This comes out to be 32 plus your 490 equals half VF squared plus 294. All right, so <clears throat> you're going to simplify this side. You get 522. Subtract 249 from both sides. You get, what is it, 228. Multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the half. 456. And then square root to cancel out that guy. And you're going to be left with a speed at that point of 21.354 meters per second. All right, number six. So for number six, let's move this up so we can see it. All right, you got uh, astronaut on the moon. 
He's enjoying small amounts of gravity. If he jumped on the moon with an initial speed of 1.51 meters per second up to a height of 0.7 meters, how much gravitational acceleration did he experience? Okay, so in this in this one, we're listed. We have that VF is zero because at the height of his jump, all right, you you lose all your your vertical speed. So if I just drew a little astronaut man, all right. Uh, sorry, I'm not a I'm not a super artist here. So he's going to jump up at the start. He's at all right height zero. And all of his mechanical energy is kinetic at this point since he's launching with an initial velocity of this 1.51 meters per second. Now he jumps up to a height of this point seven and the final velocity there would it be zero. Okay, and at this point, all right, all of his energy is then going to be potential. So we have our uh, mechanical energy in. Our initial has got to equal. Now, since all of its ke here and then all of its pe here. I'm not going to bother writing out all the other stuff. It's just going to be, all right, the KE initial is going to equal the ME final. So 1 half MV squared. And that's just going to equal MGHF. All right. So M's same slash it wasn't even given, so not worrying about it. So we're going to do half of his initial velocity of one point. Uh, let's see, one point five one meters per second. All right, we got to square the velocity. Uh, we don't know what g is on the moon, so we're going to calculate that because we know what the uh, his final height reached was. Uh, h uh, hf was point seven. 0 0.700, zero zero whatever. All right, so square the 1.51, cut it in half, and then you're going to divide that out by 700. Uh, let me just do that real quick in my calculator, just so I double check. 1.51 squared, divided by 2, divided by 0.7. And the gravitational acceleration that he is going to want to experiencing comes out to be 1.6286 meters per second squared. Okay, um, so number seven is similar to your first couple, except your initial velocity is what we're looking for. So instead of solving for VF like we had done in um, number five and like we did in number four, on these problems, you're going to kind of wind up solving for uh, the initial velocity. So you kind of rework the equation that way. The final height would be zero because
because the ball will wind up hitting the ground. So I would just maybe make a, uh, if we had to make a diagram for seven to help yourselves. Okay, so here's a table. It's a really bad table, sorry. The initial height in the problem is 0 0.68 meters. Ball rolling off has some kind of initial velocity we don't know. Ball is going to fall that 1.68 meters to the ground. At that point, the height will be 0 meters. But they tell us that it strikes the floor with a speed of 6 meters per second. So you set it up, initial uh, kinetic energy initially, plus potential energy initially, and it's going to equal the kinetic energy final, plus potential energy final. Just remember that the final is going to wind up being zero, so that will wind up uh, canceling out in the, in the problem. Okay. The front side of the problems, guys, are super, super easy, just stuff that we've done before. All right, um, just kinetic energy, potential energy, very straightforward in those problems. Okay. Come on.